Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am Bishop Basil Edwards, invite you to join us right here on Tobago Inspirational Network every Sunday evening at 4 p.m. for the program Standing on the Rock. Together we will journey through the scriptures to have a better understanding of the Holy Word of God. Standing on the Rock, every Sunday, 4 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network. Today again, this is a wonderful day. The Bible said this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Today, I am so excited to know that this whole pandemic, I am calling this thing pandemic. You know, it's a coronavirus that is one pandemic. And then also we have in our um, Twin Island of Trinidad and Tobago, the kind of different sort of um, action that would have taken place during this election time, then the true hearts of men would have been shown and the true thoughts of men would have been shown just for crave of power. And sometimes, if the church don't be careful, if we don't be careful as the body of Christ, we will find ourselves into that particular vein making assumption, saying things that we're not supposed to say. And as a result of that, what it would have done now is to cause us to look, united we stand, divided we fall. I am so glad that this pandemic is over. And I'm so disturbed by the, the statement that this young man might have used in Trinidad to create this racial discrimination against the entire nation of Trinidad and Tobago. But I hope that the church the church four walls or the church people or we the brethren or we the saints or we the elect um one that God have elected that we have not fallen into that particular bracket where we begin to speak more of a racial um thing than more of less speak about going forward and then when I heard of it this morning in work and somebody made a statement and said that these people are a company with different types of product and um, they, they, they product were on the shelf and the business community would have, would have set an example by start taking their things off from the shelf. I did not see the clip but I, somebody was sharing with me so I'm not sure how much truth it is and how many force it is. I'm not here to argue that what I'm saying. One man can make one mistake or say one thing across the border and I think the thoughts or the word that was used that black people is like cockroach and different types of things like that I'm not even sure of all the information we cannot make this racial statement all across media whether it's on Facebook or whatever it may be because as long as you think that you can steer the mind of people people are going to retaliate because when you talk of black people black people is not just the the negro race or the creole race black people is made up of indian the the the, the, the africans anybody that have this kind of hair whether it's curly or it's black we are all black people and probably somewhere around the loins or the roots we all come from ham so therefore, these are racial, and even though you may have a high color and you still have black hair, you're still black because if you live and go anywhere in America, they would not consider you as a white man or Caucasian. They will consider you as a black man. So therefore, we as Christians, whether you're Indian or Negro or Creole, we are not to make these assumptions. I hope that these statements are made across the border in the Christian fraternity because we will have known better. Amen, somebody? I I believe very carefully that this is not him. I believe very carefully this that this was a direct move of the enemy to destabilize us. We have just came out of this particular um, we are in the pandemic of the COVID-19. Now we have gone through the, the process where election has called. And now when the nation is supposed to be healing, we now find ourselves in a dead jaw of, of, of the enemy where we started struggling against each other. But may I say to you people of Trinidad and Tobago, we are not here on the, on, on the topic of just trying to slide people down the drain, but we are there to encourage one another so we can be able to say yes, 
United we stand, but divided we fall. Trinidad and Tobago is such a beautiful country in spite of, I would have said that God would have spoken. Of course, in our church, we don't, we, we, we don't promote that kind of behavioral pattern by telling people who to vote for. What we do, I ask the brethren as the bishop of the house, let us pray. And when we pray, we pray as a result as God, let your will be done. I am saying to us, we cannot want to be so wind with its PNMO, the UNC, that we have to be able to behave in such an aggressive way. And by the way, that is not my message today. I just want to send up a signal to us as believers. Let us love one another. Amen? Let us love one another. A few weeks ago, I had a thought. And my thought was baffling me. My thought was so unique that it created me to ask God a question. And the question that I asked the Lord I said, Lord, your word said that you exalt your word above your name. What is your revelation of that? And I need to know because if I don't know, I will be going around with the thought that your name is not as important as your word. And I begin to suffer through my mind, I guess, not I guess, I know it's the Holy Spirit who, who wanted me to get that information. Okay. Sorry? And before... The world was created. God was there as the word. And that's why I would have said in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And in the book of St. John chapter 14, and that verse that is so very familiar to us, verse 23, and Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. He will keep my words plural, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So Jesus said, if a man love me, then he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. That's in John chapter 14 and verse 23. And my father and I, we will come and make our abode with him. Meaning, we will come and live with him. We will come and spend ample time with him. We will come and stay with him. Because of the word. If a man love me, he will keep my words. And that's the arrangement I will make. My father and I will come. And not just he and his father alone, but the Holy Spirit. And we are going to make things straight and right. So I was asking God about his word and his name. And the Lord and the Holy Spirit, very, in a most profound way, said to me, in my subconscious, in my spirit mind, it said, remember, from the word, you have to take a letter from the word before you can form a name. There is no way that you can get the word John. There is no way that the word John can show up, except you have the J, the O, the H, and the N. So those letters come from a word that is already there. And the word is God Almighty. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. So the word there is the almighty God. And for you and I to have name today, it must come from the source that gave the word into letters and then your name is formulated. <clears throat> we think that our names are more important than the word of God. So there are times when we call ourselves or names are, we are called, like for instance, for me, my name is not Basil, my name is not Brazil, my name is Basil, I mean B-A-S-I-L, Basil, I don't know why my parents give me that name. And the second middle name that I have is Francisco, which is the name of a city. But my parents give me Basil and Francisco. But Basil stick with me because Basil means Prince King. That's what it means. That's what my name means. 
And then I have the right to, to take that name into prospect because I'm a child of God. And the Bible said, because I'm a child of God and I'm a male figure, I am the priest, I am the prophet, I am the king, I am the, 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 the apostle, I am the pastor, I am everything in my household because of the fact that I am a man that God has called for this book. And you are too. Don't let nobody trick you with words. No matter how important your name is, it is not more important than the word of God. And that's why I love the word of God. And I understand why David has to be a man after the heart of God. He said, David said, I will have I hid in my heart, O God, that I may not sin against you. He then said, my name, O God, that I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you. It's the word of God that David recognized. Only the word of God that change and transform and satisfy and make us into holiness. God's word is so powerful that out of the word you have holiness. Out of the word you have sanctification. Out of the word you have regeneration. You have righteousness. You have peace. You have joy. These all come from the word that is God himself. I am disturbed when people make themselves more fantastic than the things of God. What is the beauty of Christianity? It's not what, how intelligent I am, or not what I hold, or the houses that I live in, or the cars that I drive. That is not Christianity. That is not the beauty of a man's life. The beauty of a man's life is to hold the word of God. And if you hold the word of God, Jesus said, if you love me, Keep my word, and my father and I, we will come, and we will live with you. You may ask the question why there are so many people behaving so, so, so notorious and behave so, so unlike and unloved because they don't have the word of God inside of them. Show me a man who reads the word of God. Show me a man who meditates on the word of God. Show me a man who takes very much, much, appreciation for the word of God and I will show you a man who read the word of God for the word of God gave light to the very entrance of a man's life I am fed up with the behavior of people's life maybe if that man in Trinidad was reading the word of God or he, he was a Christian he would not have used such statement to draw such real um, aggravation in the country after a few days of election that you can want to know split the entire island of Trinidad and Tobago. No matter how rich a man is, for him to get there, he need the helps of other people, whether it's the Negro race or the Cree or the Indian, whether it's the, the India or the African. You need that part of your life to think because when you have your groceries this, if the Indian does not come and buy, if the Negroes don't come and buy, then you have nothing. So if we are divided, then what sense does that make? We have to learn to love. And that's why Jesus said, if you love me, the key word for us to go through, so the word of God will continue to remain and abide in us. If you love me, you will keep my words. We have too much hiccups, even with this election. I'm sure that even in Tobago, we have Christians who would have gone beyond the doors and the bar. If in your homes, you might have been home arguing. Arguing or vex with your wife and your children because they may not vote, vote for who you want them to vote for. And sometimes we make statements, you know, I am a PM. And anyone in this house have to be that. No, people have choices. Yes, people have choices. And when a man becomes an adult, he has choices to make. His conscience must rule because God is the one who leads by his spirit. The word of God is more eminent to me, more important to me than our very life. Because you know, our names may be important, but when we get the word of God, it directs our path. That's why I love in, in, in the very scriptures when he tells us, I think it's in Proverbs, six things the Lord hates. Amen, somebody? Six things the Lord hates, and we must always understand that when God hates things, are you here, somebody? God is better able to bring us to the place for us to understand. Six things the Lord hates. Why should God hate six things? Because he's telling us why in Proverbs chapter 6, and from verse, let me see if I could find it here. Amen, somebody? Amen, somebody? 
Let me see if I could find it. Proverbs chapter 6. Let me see if I could find it, please. It's very important for me. I think it's in verse 16. Oh, yes. So give me one minute. Let me see if I could find it there. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 16. These six things the Lord hath. Yet seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. A lying tongue. Hands that ash, that shed innocent blood. And heart that devise wicked imagination. Feet that swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that soweth discord among brethren. That's the seventh one. <clears throat> Sowing discord. And well, this is from a Christian perspective. But when we are in our homes and we would have lost that holistic love for our family because of this election that has just gone. I am positive sure husbands or wife may have been in the house and because they may have had an argument with the wife just believed that you know, you're going a little too far, Hussie, and she tried to correct you. You get so angry that maybe you have not, you may have passed a night or two and you would not have said anything to her because you're very angry. Politics is politics. Somebody wins, somebody lose. The country must be run, but we must understand it's God that run it. I use that as a method to say that our words is what create that strict environment of anger. Our words create a part of whereby you and I will never want to go because after we have so much showdown with competitional behavioral pattern, is who better than who? Nobody is better than nobody. And nobody could be better than nobody. But only God alone that will tell us. You see, if God is on the inside and if God is with us, we will make solid decisions. We don't even have to worry about who next he will put. He always put the right people in place. Are you hearing me, somebody? A praying nation of Trinidad and Tobago, as long as we continue to pray, God put the people he, who he needs in the right place. Let's stop fretting and worrying about what, 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 who good and who better than who. Hey, may I say to you, ain't nobody better than nobody. We operate the way we think best to operate, but it's only God put it up and God pull it down. Congratulations to Mr. Dr. Keith Rowley. And also congratulations to Miss, to our opposition leader, Kamala Bissessa. We must do that because this is a healing time for our island and our land. I'm not straying too far from my message. So hear me, please. If God's words do not exceed in your life, then you become a spiritual dwarf. Meaning that you're only one place, but you're stagnant. You're not going anywhere. So Jesus made that very important statement that will create an environment for growth. And that's why I see it is very important for us as believers that we take the word of God very seriously. And the Bible tells us very clearly that Jesus Christ, he said in John, in, in, in John 14, and I probably need to read a little further down, in, in that particular verse, where he said verse 23, and verse, 24, verse 23 say he that, he said, he said, amen somebody, let me just get it again, I think I missed, right, and we must understand very clearly that with God all things are possible, amen, and then if you notice what Jesus did in that particular statement, when he made that statement, and Jesus answered and said unto them, if a man love me, if a man love me, if you love Jesus, then he has no problem with your brother, sister, aunt, uncle, nephew, and the body of Christ. If a man love me, what will happen? He will keep my words. I want to put it in that context bracket. He will keep my words. It seems like I'm repeating myself, but I need you to get that. My words. He will keep my words. And this is exciting. You know why it's so exciting? Let me tell you why it's exciting. Sometimes we, 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 we hear scriptures 
and we 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 try to we try to understand the real purpose of scriptures and sometimes you, you know it 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 continue to encourage me that scriptures is what make the best out of everything and sometimes when you look at what is happening in this day and time you say lord why are we having so much problem and struggle with sicknesses and diseases because we don't use the word we don't use the word we use every other thing else we use a doctor medicine we use all that the people tell us that we could boil and drink and when everything looked like it has no actual power or anything to do to ease our situation, we now want to go to God. So we always find God at the least, when, at the, at everything at the least when we already exhaust every other thing to do. Right? Matthew chapter 4 and verse 7, he answered and said unto it, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. So what Jesus would have done, he said, he said, um, if you love me, you will keep my words. It meaning that if you love me, you will keep whatever I say because everything I say to you, it comes directly from the Father. So it's my Father and I words. But when Jesus now was making that assertion to the devil, you notice it's not a plural word, but it now becomes a singular word. So let's see how he said. And he answered and said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So then it, it does not need a plural form of sense in that sense. It needs a singular thing because Jesus himself is receiving the word from the Father. And then when he releases it now, that word that he released now becomes the words. Somebody hear me please today. So we release or what we receive from Jesus is his words. When he received from the Father word and he released it, it becomes his words. And his words now have the capacity to heal the sick, the lame, the blind, the prostitute, the harlot, the homosexual, the lesbian. Because his words are so powerful. Amen somebody today. I want us to feed on God's words. My dearly beloved wife. And I was saying to somebody last night. I went to pick up something from somebody and I was making that statement to them. While my wife was there, I said it caused me to love my wife more than a hundred percent. I I add a hundred and fifty more, so I love my wife two hundred and fifty. You know why? When I look at my wife when she get ill, and I was not hearing the voice that I'm accustomed to hear, I heard I actually hear a childlike voice when she couldn't get to do what she wants to do, and she started to cry like a baby. It break my heart. And it caused me to love my wife more, even though I'd love my wife a hundred. I want to say to us, husband, love your wife, please. I beg you, please. Don't wait until they reach to a place of illness or reach to a place of destructiveness or whatever they may look at. Or oh, they're not able to satisfy your, your sexual pleasure because they, they may be sick and they're not able to serve you anymore. That does not give you the right to leave them because you can't have sex. Sit by them side. Hug them. Make them feel good. And the lady was sharing with me and my wife, and that moved me so much. She said, the mister that I was living with, because of the, 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 what they were giving him, when he comes home in the night sometime to sleep, his whole body will begin to shake, shake up, shake up, shake up, shake up. And she said, I had to comfort him. She, she said, I've never felt that whole way in my life, but I had to comfort him and hug him just to calm him down so he can feel warm. There is no sex involved in that. Today, I'm saying to us as husband and wife, we have lost friendship. That's not the subject. I'm, I'm closing. We have lost companionship. We have lost love for one another. So we treat our wives as we feel like. And we treat our husband as we feel like. May your husband get into the world. And may your wife get into the world and know how to treat your husband and how to treat your wife. Amen, somebody? So I want to big up my beautiful wife, Agatha Dillon, which I love her very much. I have two beautiful children, three of them, yes. My, my, bio, my two biological children. And the third one, my daughter, Darlene, yes. She, she grew with us. 
And uh, even though she's not biologically, you would not know that because she go with my two daughters, Deborah Desiree and Darlene, and my real four handsome men. Gabriel, Michael, Emmanuel, and Daniel. I want to thank you all very much. And I want to continue to pray for me, my wife, and my family. I want to say I love you very much. So let's pray. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for your blessings. And for all of our listeners, for those who continue to encourage me, for those who will continue to be there for us, I pray for friends that are continuous praying for me. So I make the right decision, say the right thing. And say, dear God, my, 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 I have no apologies for what I said because the word of God is my guideline. May you comfort them. May you heal their body. May you heal their mind. May you heal their spirit. May you heal their entire life. I declare your peace upon their life right now. And I say, God bless you. Remember Bishop Basil Lovelio. Okay, I love you very much. You feel free to call. If there's anything that you need to discuss or you want to talk about, feel free to call. And God's blessing upon you. Amen. Blessings to you. Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am Bishop Basil Edwards. Invite you to join us right here on Tobago Inspirational Network every Sunday evening at 4 p.m. for the program Standing on the Rock. Together we will journey through the scriptures to have a better understanding of the Holy Word of God. Standing on the Rock every Sunday 4 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network